Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship here in St. Lawrence's Church in Chapel Lizard. I had a little video that I had planned to have at the very beginning of our service last week, but there was problems with it. And so I'm going to show that now just to remind us of the story of Holy Week right up to Easter morning. And in this morning's service, we're going to reflect a little bit on how did the disciples and how can we come to believe that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead? It wasn't easy for them and it isn't easy for us. But let's first watch this little video and have our first um, hymn for this morning.
We begin with our Easter greeting, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Some verses from the Gospel according to St. John. On the evening of the first day of the week, while the disciples were together, when the door was locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. As I said a few moments ago, we're going to reflect a little bit on the journey that the disciples went on and what we may learn from them as they seek to unpack what has happened on that first Easter morning. And we're going to use the story from Luke's Gospel of the road to Emmaus, the road to Amos, as the basis of our reflection. But let's begin, firstly, with the introduction to our morning prayer service. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, and to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. We take a moment of quiet before we pray together. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And we praise God in the words of a modern hymn version of the canticle, the Jubilate, hymn 701, the Jubilate.
having one Bible reading today because it's a long one from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 24 beginning at the 13th verse. That same day, Sunday, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles out of Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking of Jesus' death, when suddenly Jesus himself came along and joined them and began walking beside them. But they didn't recognise him, for God kept them from it. You seem to be in deep discussion about something, he said. What are you so concerned about? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces, and one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about the terrible things that happened there last week. What things, Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did incredible miracles and was a mighty teacher, highly regarded by both God and man. But the chief priests and our religious leaders arrested him and handed him over to the Roman government to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had thought that he was the glorious Messiah and that he had come to rescue Israel. And now, besides all this, which happened three days ago, some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning and came back with an amazing report that his body was missing and that they had seen some angels there who told him Jesus was alive, is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, Jesus' body was gone, just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, you are such foolish, foolish people. You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted by the prophets that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his time in glory? Then Jesus quoted them, passage after passage, from the writing of the prophets, beginning with the book of Genesis and going right through the scriptures, explaining what the passages meant and what they said about himself. By this time they were nearing Emmaus and the end of the journey. Jesus would have gone on, but they begged him to stay the night with them as it was getting late. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he asked God's blessing on the food and then took a small loaf of bread and broke it and was passing it over to them when suddenly it was as though their eyes were opened. They recognised him and at that moment he disappeared. They began telling each other how their hearts had felt strangely warm as he talked with them and explained the scriptures during the walk down the road. Within the, the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem, where the eleven disciples and the other followers of Jesus greeted them with these words, The Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they had recognised him as he was breaking the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, by your Spirit, help us to have our eyes open as we too walk along the road this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Easter! And so often we celebrate this as this dramatic explosion of the excitement of Jesus Christ risen from the dead. But, as you were reminded in our video at the beginning of this service, gosh, for the first disciples, they've been through the emotional roller coaster of that first Holy Week. And this Sunday that's described in our Bible reading today is full of not just the deep loss and pain, but deep questions and uncertainties. And 
it's a wonderful story kept for us. And as, gosh, it seems a long time ago when we were looking at the parables from Matthew's Gospel before Lent, and often I ask the question, why is this story here? What does this story have to teach us today? And that's very true of all the stories, particularly the stories in the Gospels. And this story has a lot to teach us today. And Luke, the writer of this gospel, is a doctor. We hear about him also in the Acts of the Apostles. He wrote the, the, those as well, and he traveled with um, St. Paul. He's a very educated man. He's not just randomly throwing out ideas. He's very pointed in how he's written this passage. And just in case we haven't got what he's trying to tell us through this passage, he summarizes it, it summarizes it in verse 34. And we'll think about these two main points as we continue this reflection. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how a Jesus appeared to them as they were walking along the road, or another translation might be along the way, and how they recognized him as he was breaking the bread. Walking along the way. Let's think about that for a few minutes. Firstly, the title that we give ourselves nowadays, Christians, was not a title that the early Christians gave themselves. The, the title they used was The Way. They were walking along the way, they were part of the way. That was the title given by Jesus' followers in the early days of the church. So, when Luke tells us that Jesus appeared to the, these disciples as they walked along the way, he's telling us that Jesus ex, ex, um, appeared or revealed himself as when they were part of the community of faith. Let's think about that in the main body of the story. A couple of things. Firstly, these disciples were not walking with the disciples. These guys had not stayed having heard that the tomb was empty and an angel had told the women that Jesus had risen from the dead. They weren't staying in the place of uncertainty and difficulty and fear. They were getting out of there. They were walking away. And yet, even as they walked away, Jesus walked with them. And it's interesting that Jesus tells, uh, that Luke tells us that Emmaus is seven miles from Jerusalem. And seven is a word within scripture which means, speaks of heaven and perfection. So although they were walking the seven miles away from Jerusalem, there was something powerful in that walk because Jesus comes alongside them. And that even as we at times have deep doubts, deep uncertainties, and at times we may ourselves walk away from the way, the community of faith, we are not on our own. God hasn't abandoned us just because we may not recognize Jesus walking with us, just because we may have deep questions, deep anger at what has and hasn't happened. Jesus is still there with us. He still walks along the way with us. And even as we have debates and discussions together, Jesus is part of them. I wonder whether in some of the discussion debates in your head, or in your household, or within your family, or your friends, I wonder would there be a moment to think, gosh, I wonder what Jesus would say if he turned up walking alongside us in this discussion. Your friends might think you a bit strange, but <laughs> maybe. What does Jesus do as he walks along the way with these disciples? He doesn't have the book. This is my, my book of the scriptures. He doesn't have the written scroll with him of what we call the Old Testament of the Jewish scriptures. But he has it written in his head and his heart. And he opens the scriptures to these disciples along the way 
in the community of faith and he helps them to see how God had intended for Jesus to come, how God had intended Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection, that none of this was a mistake, none of this was an accident, that they could meet with Jesus within the scriptures as they were discussed and unpacked with, by Jesus within the community of the faith. And that's true today as much as it was on that first Easter day. We believe by God's Holy Spirit, Jesus walks alongside us. And particularly within the community of faith, but also personally, as we read the scriptures, as we invite Jesus to reveal himself, to reveal God to us, as we read the scriptures, we believe he does. And as we unpack the scriptures in our worship week by week, we believe God reveals himself to us. So that's the first part, being along the way. That as we walk along the way, as we're part of a community of faith, even if we might be walking away from it, Jesus is with us and takes part in our conversations and reveals himself to us through the scriptures. And then the second part of the summary that Luke has given us in verse 35 to make sure we get the point. What's the point? And how they recognised Jesus as he was breaking the bread. Breaking the bread. Now that's a phrase we might catch more easily nowadays. What do we think we're talking about? We talk about breaking the bread. Surely we're talking about that celebration of Holy Communion, of the Eucharist, the breaking of bread. That as the gathered community come together in worship, in reading and reflecting on the scriptures, in prayer and in the breaking of bread, Jesus reveals himself. Jesus revealed himself both to the first disciples and Jesus reveals himself to us. Now this is not a sermon in which to unpack the different theologies of what's going on in Holy Communion. But what is important in Holy Communion and is part of the, the heartbreak of not being able to share Holy Communion together is the revealing of Jesus as we break the bread and share it together. The disciples on that first Easter day were able to meet with the risen Jesus in his physical form. We have that amazing uh, excitement as they get back to Jerusalem and Jesus has appeared to Peter. We have the, the, the wonderful story in John's Gospel about poor Thomas, who's the one who's not there when Jesus reveals himself to the other apostles. And he rightly says, if only I could stick my fingers in, then I'll believe, but I are not telling me any poppycock. And how Jesus said, blessed are you who believe. How much more blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. It is not easy to believe and to understand what the empty tomb means. It wasn't easy for the first disciples and gosh there's been enough books written about it through the years to know it's not easy for us today either. But I believe, as we'll declare in a few minutes, that that tomb was empty. That Jesus had risen from the dead. That the disciples had changed from this gang of terrified followers who were running away to excited followers who travelled the known world and went to their death declaring that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. But not only that. 
But that as he's gone to be with the Father in heaven, as he's poured out the Holy Spirit on us, as individuals and as God's people, the members of God's way, that we can meet with Jesus even today. As we walk along the way, as we reflect in the scriptures, and as we break bread together. That isn't limited by whether we're on the road from Jerusalem or on the road from Chapel Izzard today. Jesus is no longer limited by his physical body. By the power of God's Holy Spirit, he is with us wherever we are. Let's take a moment of quiet before we pray. Lord Jesus, Cleopas and his friend walked away from Jerusalem full of heartbreak, hurt, and doubt. And you walked with them. You opened the scriptures to them. You took part in their debate and their discussion. And you revealed yourself in the breaking of bread. Lord, walk with us today. In our fears and our hearts and our uncertainties. Warm our hearts by your presence. Reveal yourself in scripture. And Lord, we pray that soon we will gather together in the breaking of bread. So that we may meet with you in a very special way as we share communion together. Thank you. Thank you that you have overcome death. And you are alive forevermore. Amen. Let's declare our faith in the risen Christ, in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The collect for this, the first Sunday after Easter or the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of wickedness and malice that we may always serve you in pureness of, li of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together the first and second collects at morning prayer. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
and we continue in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. Lord of your people, strengthen your church in all the world. We pray for any who today, like the disciples, walk away from your faith and your church. For those who walk away because of doubt or hurt or fear, we pray for those who, like the women, seek to share the good news of the resurrection, but who are not heard or listened to. We pray for all in leadership in your church and all who, by their words and their deeds, teach, seek to share the good news of the risen Jesus. And we pray for all who gather in worship this day and for all who are unable to physically gather in worship today. We pray that each may know your presence, even though we may be far from being able to walk together along your way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, we thank you for springtime and all the hope and joy it brings. And yet, even in this past week, as we've had the snow and the sunshine and the flowers, we're reminded that nature is both full of joy and hope, but also of difficulty and destruction. And we pray for all who are impacted by natural disasters or climate change. We pray for all who are producing our food, and we pray your blessing on each one. We pray for the nations of the world, remembering particularly those who are undergoing famine or natural disasters, those caught up in war and violence, economic uncertainty, and those being devastated by COVID and its impact. We pray for all who are leaders throughout the world and in this land. We pray particularly for those in leadership in Northern Ireland. And we pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Lord of our relationships, we pray for homes and families. We pray for those who gather in joy and for those who gather in strife and sadness. We pray for those whose daily life is filled with anxiety and fear and for those for whose daily life is an easy routine. We pray for those who desperately need space and for those who desperately need company. We thank you for all who look out for one another, for neighbours, friends and family. We thank you for those organisations who seek to bring hope and healing and peace and joy. And we pray for the work of all who are decision makers in our land, at whatever level, that they may work and decide for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord of all healing. In a moment of quiet, we bring before God those known to us who need his healing in a special way today. We pray for all who are ill, in hospital or at home, in care facilities. We pray for those who are recovering from illness 
We pray for those undergoing tests and treatment. We pray for those who live with ongoing disability and pain. We pray for those who are in their last season of life. We pray for all who work within our health and care services. We pray for all those who seek to bring life and love and healing and hope. We pray for those who live with loss and bereavement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a time of quiet, we bring our own particular prayers and concerns before God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of eternity, bind us together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all who, having confessed the faith, have died in the peace of Christ, that we may entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to you, Lord God, and come with all your saints to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. To God, who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, to him be glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. It's been lovely to have you with me. With us, because although I'm the only person physically present here in the church at the moment, we are gathered through this virtual worship by God's Holy Spirit. And it's been lovely to share that, share with you in this. And I pray that as you continue to walk along the way, that you may know God's presence with you, that you may have Jesus reveal himself in scripture, and that we may gather together to share in the breaking of bread very, very soon. Some good news, particularly in this community in St. Lawrence's, is that uh, Des O'Carroll has just arrived back from his um, stint in Syria, and it's great to have Des back, even if he's locked away, but in the community of chapel, is it? And welcome home, Des. And we pray God's blessing on you as you get used to the cold and as you have some time of refreshment and renewal. And we pray for all who work overseas on behalf of us as part of the Irish Army and for the group that have gone to replace the group that um, Des was part of in Syria. Um, and just to remind you that if you're a member of the parish that we'll be having what's our uh, general Easter vestry meeting, which is like the parish AGM, um, they'll, there'll be one for St Mary's and one for St Lawrence's at the end of the month. And not put all the information at the end of this video, I'll put it at the end of next week's video. But it's also in the mailing if you've gotten that. If you didn't get the mailing for whatever reason and would like to join us, the, uh, the Easter Vestry is happening by Zoom and you can join us on computer, on mobile phone or on telephone. Please contact me. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.